Hi, everybody. I'm Shannon Carr, the founder of Hopeful Hearts Ministry. You are joining us today for our Hopeful Hearts podcast, and I am joined by my executive director of Hopeful Hearts Ministry, Tamara Lexo. Um, and today I'm, I'm excited because I don't know the whole story, but there's something that happened to Tamara last week that we just mm -hmm. need to talk about. But um, it really made me think about the aspect within trauma of, you know, often people say if something bad happens to you or a traumatic experience happens, that will fight or flight. And then mm -hmm. thankfully now more and more people are starting to recognize that there's a freeze. But I think that Tamara has even said that there's now a fourth, fourth category. So I'm really excited to, to hear more about that as well. But that's what we're going to be discussing today is this fight, flight, or freeze. And, and you know, what is, it, what is it that we do? And it might be in different situations that mm -hmm. we act differently, but um, we're going to break that down and, and go through that and, and just discuss that in regards to what that looks like for us on our healing journey. And um, so I'm excited to be with you guys today. Hi, Tamara. Hi. So you're yes, always so I had... pretty on here. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. It's so funny mine. because I hate that I we're just... doing this YouTube now. <laughs> I know. I was just talking to uh, a group of friends on text the other day, and I said, "I think the older I get, the more I look like a drag queen." It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, no oh offense to anybody. I'm just saying, like, that is hilarious. Like some people, you know, for all those age. that are just listening podcasts, they're now right. going to go look us up. It's Hopeful right. Hearts Ministry on YouTube. And then now you can see Tamara's Jack Queen. Right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like some you people, are as they age, they just, uh, they get more natural and, you know, let their hair be soft and natural and um, not much makeup. I'm like, the older I get, I'm like, uh, <laughs> false lashes contouring lip <laughs> you're making me laugh when my kids were well like, you like, still apparently energy. have you still apparently have uh you know a lot of uh fans because you did have something crazy happen I so I had the craziest <laughs> thing happen the other night and I don't know that this was this is a fan thing I, this was just bizarre so my husband and I were having dinner at a local place to eat <laughs> a restaurant. I don't, um, <laughs> and it's a place where, you know, we always see people we know. And so there were some friends of ours that were sitting across the dining hall and uh, dining area, not dining hall. It's not like we're at college, but it's across the dining <laughs> area. Like, Are you at the cafeteria? <laughs> right. Really? No, <laughs> they were way across. The <laughs> Sorry, room. I just snorted. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> well, so they were all getting up to leave. And one friend came over and sat down and talked to us for a while. And we were just, excuse me, we were just catching up. And uh, we were sitting near the bar. And there was a man at the bar that turned around and you could tell he recognized our other friend that had just sat down. And our friend was like, hey, to the guy, waved. The guy was like, I know you from somewhere. And our friend said, yeah, I know you because I used to work with your sister-in-law. And so he's explaining, he's like, this is, you know, I met you at this event and this event because I used to work with your sister-in-law. Well, the guy had had several beverages, let's say, several alcoholic beverages, and it was having an effect mm -hmm. on him in a big way. <laughs> he he was not understanding, friend. Like he wasn't he wasn't computing. You know, it was like my friend is going, "Yeah, I met you here, 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 and here because I used to work with your sister." And the guy's like. Hmm. But I know you from somewhere. He's like, yep. I met you here, 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 here. Yep. Because they get service. I guess. But 
you just look so familiar. And my friend's like, because I met you here, here, here. Anyway, the guy pulls up a chair then, and I'm thinking, oh, great. Stranger that can't compute is now going to join us. So he pulls up a chair. A great conversation. <laughs> right. This is going to be fabulous. Pulls up a chair, sits down, and starts talking. Well, after just a few minutes, our friend's like, okay, well, I got to go home and leaves. And my husband says, uh, well, I need to go to the restroom. I'll be right back. And he looks at me and he's like, hey, go ahead and pay our bill. Well, this guy is like, no, I got your bill. I got your bill. I'm, I'm covering you. I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to do that. <clears throat> so he takes our ticket and leaves. So I went up to the cash stand and I was like, hey, I want to pay our bill. And they're like, no, he already did it. It's like, uh, I felt bad because <clears throat> you know, I don't know this guy. And also he'd had a lot to drink. So I was thinking, is he going to regret this tomorrow? Paying for our bill. I'd had a nice bottle of wine on it when <laughs> he bought it all. So then he came. So he walks back over and he goes, Would it be okay if I just gave you a hug? Because you were so kind tonight to let me come sit down and interrupt your evening. And it, he it was like harmless. So I'm like, sure. So I give this guy a hug and he leans in this is where YouTube is getting like leans in and he's holding me tight and this, this big guy not like a big scary guy it was like a big teddy bear but he's like holding me really tight and he leans in to my right ear and he like when my hair is there and he goes and like sniffs for, <laughs> real big and I was like Mm. I immediately start to pull back because that just that gave mm -hmm. me the creeps yeah but he took his hand and he brushed my hair back and nuzzled his nose into my neck and I'm pulling back I'm like watching you with my face I all like scrunched up I'm pulling <laughs> I'm sorry, back and he goes he goes he looks oh. me he licked my neck. <laughs> I'll tell you. He licked my neck. Oh my gosh. I was licked. Like, and I just like I just stood there. I <sighs> was in such shock. I mean, mm -hmm. there was no fight or flight. I froze. I really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. froze and he just, he pulled back and he was like, well, I hope to see you again someday. And then he like toddled <laughs> off and he was like, I don't, I just, like, I'm standing there with my mouth mm -hmm. hanging open and the bartender was like standing right there and he goes, this is like, so are you okay? I'm like, she licked me. He goes, mm -hmm. what? <laughs> I Did you say that right? <laughs> <laughs> that man just licked me. He goes, Mr. So and so, like, said his name. I couldn't even tell you this man's name. I have no idea who he is. He goes, Mr. So and so. I'm like, yes. He goes, I just saw him hugging you. I said, and then he sniffed me. And then he licked me. He goes, <laughs> what? That's so weird. weird. <laughs> oh my God. Now, honestly, I think this man is probably harmless. I think, and I couldn't pick him out of a lineup if I had a lineup in front of me right now. I really couldn't because the licking seem to have erased <laughs> any right like his face is gone from my memory of sitting at our table and talking to us and it, that's gone but that's something to put a pin in honestly it is. Tamara, because that that is. is something that happens to us is if we've been it, through multiple traumas 
Yeah. As this, you know, kind of that disassociation yeah. aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Our brain shuts a wall down and goes, his face isn't mm-hmm. right, isn't important right now. He licked you. That's what's mm-hmm. important. Mm-hmm. Get away <laughs> from the licking. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I just, I mean, I real I just stood there because I was mm-hmm. I was completely frozen. And um you know, just within, mo- I mean, the guy's gone. My husband comes back yeah. uh, from the restroom and he was like, okay, you ready to go? And I'm standing there, I'm pointing, like I have my finger up and I can't even say anything. And he's like, what? What's wrong? I said, well, <laughs> he paid our bill. He goes, oh, that was really nice. He didn't have to do that. I said, and then he licked me. He's <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sorry I laugh every time because it's no, just so ludicrous. It's, just, it's so like you just you don't Mm-mm. you don't encounter drive-by lickings very often. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. And I'm I feel like I can laugh about this now. I mean, yes, that was a weird um I mean, it was a weird thing. And obviously, I mean, it was traumatic in a way, but I, I can laugh about it because I I wasn't physically harmed and the man wasn't attacking. I, I don't know this man, but I, um, I don't think knowing who his relatives are that are with these friends, just, I don't think he is somebody that licks people on it. <laughs> um yeah. I don't I hope not but you know what let me let me say this so this is kind of so everybody Tamara uh texts me that night and was like uh the weirdest thing happened uh somebody just licked me <laughs> like, yeah. what licked you you know and anyway so we haven't had the chance to really talk about it in yeah. full mm-hmm. um but I, she was like, licked my neck. <laughs> oh my gosh, craziness. Okay. But what's interesting is, is that I was then talking to my husband about it. And I was just like, I mean, just how crazy. Now, granted, a, most abuses in general are just out of the weirdness crazy, right? I mean, so we're not trying to diminish this at all. No. I mean, and we could say that maybe he wouldn't, but we don't know. And I don't know. I mean, there's so much to unpack here, really. But the one thing that made me think of this concept, the whole fight, flight, or freeze, and mm-hmm. then, of course, I want to hear more about what you've, the test that you've mm-hmm. taken recently. But mm-hmm. my husband said, well, you know what? I know that if it, that happened to you, I wouldn't have had to worry about you. You would have definitely like said something, stood up for yourself. Right. He wasn't putting you, Tamara, down. He was no. just saying, oh, I know you. Because, and I think people, as you can watch this YouTube, I'm probably a little bit louder, yeah. a little bit more animated at times. Well, or whatever. but that's what most and of my I, friends said. Too. They were like, did you punch him? I I'm like, <laughs> no. Right. But that's why I, I, but I, I sat too. there. Right. You would normally think that we would, because that's, yeah. I mean, I would think that we would be that way. But when he mm-hmm. said that, I thought I probably, no, I would have froze. I know that I would have frozen because that has been my response mm-hmm. is to freeze because I think it's this sense of uh, this, that buildup, you know, of whatever's released in that moment and that trigger yeah. And then as you were saying, you know, like you can't even pick them out in the lineup, like that, just that immediate Mm -hmm. defense mode to disassociate happens. And Mm -hmm. when we say disassociate, a lot of people think, oh, you become another whole personality. No, that's, I mean, there's a whole spectrum of that. And one day we'll have to talk about that on the show, but no, I mean, there's an aspect that can Mm. literally, it's just a mind safety but yeah basically and it can do different things and it you can shut certain things out or shut certain things off or I've had people you know my husband heard me somebody apparently said 
something to me. He heard them say exactly what they said to me. It, this wasn't even anything that troubling. And I'm like, and he goes, but it was like, you didn't even hear them. And you just mm -hmm. went into something else. And she, he goes, but you were looking right at her. Mm -hmm. And I, I hate that because I'm like, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't know she said that. Yeah. He was like, but you were looking right at her. And then you said such and such. And I was like, but I, but I honest to God did not like, I mm -hmm. didn't compute what she said, or I didn't yeah. hear her or I wasn't present in that moment. But anyway, so I, I too would have frozen and it, and I really wanted to talk about that because I think a lot of people like you and me, you know, like your friends, you're like Tamara, you would have punched them out, you know, or right. you would have, you know, like, oh my gosh, Chuck, get yeah. him, kick his butt, right. you know, or whatever. And, right. and I don't, I don't know that I would have, maybe afterwards, maybe after I would have been like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. Russ, you should have, you know, kicked his butt, but he probably would have looked at me and been like, but you didn't, like, I didn't even know anything was wrong. You didn't yeah. say anything or. Right. I thought maybe you liked it because you just smiled at him. You know, I mean, that's. <laughs> Right. I mean, well, I mean, I'm joking, but also that is, that is a common excuse that abusers will use like a molesters, whatever, you know, they'll say, well, but like she smiled the whole time. She was laughing the whole time. And you go, yep. Yeah, because she was frozen. <laughs> you know, I mean, when something feels so absurd you know like I think because you know the friends that I had talked to and they're like did you punch him if it was somebody I knew and somebody that was <clears throat> I don't know being aggressive or you know there was something like there had been things that were leading up to that where I had felt like mm -hmm. this is guys being inappropriate this you know these things he's saying are wrong like there would have been a buildup for my mind to go, okay, get ready. You may have to fight this guy. All right, get ready, Tamara. You're mm -hmm. going to have to claw his eyes out or whatever, you know, but it wasn't. It was like stranger at the bar came and sat down talking to the this other friend, not even really talking to me. Oh, he did this kind of thing. He paid my mm -hmm. bill and then he licked me. I was like. But you know what? That is such a good example, right? But you're so right. Even like I, I think about, you know, what happened to me in high school, my date rate situation, or even in college, yeah. both date rate situations. It's not that they pick you up and show you right. a gun or, you know, right. do something that make you start, mm -hmm. like you said, that buildup of where you're like, yeah. uh, something's amiss. I'm mm -hmm. not feeling right. I'm about to have to fight for myself. Right. I agree with you. I And I've been in moments like that, yes. that I have yes. been able to run mm -hmm. or scream or whatever, right? To flight mm -hmm. is another option. Um, but it's when they have you feeling safe, secure, you know, they take you completely off guard. Right. And it's like, it's that absurdity. Right. It's the absurdity of, Oh my God. What is, how, well, it's like, like I'm in this restaurant I'm where no, I eat I'm saying, at least yeah. once a week and the bartender that I know mm -hmm. is there and the wait stuff, like they're all around, like the people were vacuuming and it's like, this is a totally normal, comfortable situation. It's normal for my husband to get up and go to the restroom at the end. <laughs> oh, it's normal for me to sign off on the tape. Like all the things felt normal, but then a stranger mm -hmm. licked me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I just had a thought now, just like in that, I wonder, you know, when we, people talk about their life flashing before their eyes in a dangerous situation or like before death, I wonder if that is really like truly a brain response of, oh my gosh, this is big danger coming at you. So it's like, remember all the happy times, remember all the happy times because danger, danger, danger is coming at you. I don't know. I mean, you'd mm -hmm. have to talk to some brain scientists for that, but um yeah you know there was no time for my brain to think happy thoughts it was just mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so and then later you know and then that's where you feel kind of I mean in your situation I'm sure you don't feel any maybe any shame or guilt or whatever but in a major you know right 
I don't want to call your thing not traumatic because no, what just but, happened to you that we keep laughing about, it very well could have triggered somebody yes. not as far on their healing journey right? and caused them to immediately right. get so triggered that it would set them back, Absolutely. right? Or it would cause Absolutely. them to feel shame because did I, mm. did I lead him right. to think that he had a right to lick my right. neck? Did you? Yeah. Not that like, you. What ever did felt I do? This, what did I like, say earlier? Right. You know, like, did I say anything when Chuck got up to go to the restroom? Did I say something that was like, "Hey, come lick me," or you know, it's like, no, oh, I know that none of that happened, and and laughing about it now, and I've laughed off and on since it happened, but I definitely had moments of like, you know, like my skin crawling and, um. Mm-hmm you know, some flashbacks to, you know, my early, early childhood with like the sniffing was more of the you know, the thing where it was like, oh gosh, that felt like would that happen? But, um, but like you said, because, because I've done and I don't want to say enough, but I've done quite a bit of, of work towards healing. You know, I know the steps to take now to, to go back and go, okay, this was not that I'm not in danger at this moment, you know, like I can, I can remind myself of things. And then, you know, the big one was just, I mean, praying and saying, okay, God, help me, help me to forgive this man because I don't know his story. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know why he felt it appropriate to lick someone, but you know, he did and help me not be scarred mm-hmm. by this, you know, let me let, let go of this. And then God has, it was just, um, <clears throat> yeah, it was just a, a very odd situation, but I'm glad that it is, is bringing us back to this discussion of fight, flight or freeze <clears throat> because I, I'm sorry, I just fall in this like in my throat today. And, um, so I took a test, um, the trauma and fear response test, and it, mm-hmm. this was just, it was online and, um, they list four default, um, responses to trauma and fear. So it has fight, freeze and flight, but also fawn. So they go fight, freeze, fawn, flight. And the fawn response actually came up as my second highest. My first one was fight, which was like what most of my friends <laughs> suggested, thought, you know, soon. My first highest response was fight, but my second was fawn. And I thought that was interesting. But when I started reading about it, it I then know I told you earlier, it like it kind of turned my stomach a little bit because it reminded me. And I'll just mm-hmm. I'll read you the the um the descriptions that they have here. So fight is you confront the threat. Fight says the fight trauma response makes you want to take charge and eliminate the danger before it eliminates you. Your brain instantly prepares your body for physical combat by sending signals throughout your body. So like, I'm like, you're, you're going to be the ninja there. You're going to punch. You're going to yell. Your jaw's going to tighten up. Your skin's going to flush. You're going to have angry words. You know, everything in your body is like, go. Um, and then freeze the freeze trauma response, which is what happened to me in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Freeze trauma response makes paralyzed and unable makes you paralyzed and unable to function under pressure. Your brain starts to work in a hyper vigilant regime and simultaneously freezes you in place to protect you from a threat. So it's like brain is going ninety to nothing, I guess, and but your body freezes in place. So it's like awesome. They did. You know, it's like right. roll over. So 
I'll go down. Hold on before you go on to the next one. Well, before you go on to the next one, um, I had to do a certification, um, but all like the policemen had to do it. It was the same one, like Mm -hmm. policemen and and first responding nurses and Mm -hmm. all these people, we all had to do this particular certification and this neuroscientist came in, which I would love to have one on our show one day because it was so fascinating. But she was saying, and the reason why, and I love that she was talking to policemen about this, uh, because also within, there's levels, obviously, of that frozen response, that freeze Mm -hmm. response. Mm -hmm. And within that level, as I said, comes also that disassociation. And people, and I've had this happen back, way back, uh, where you check out, like you're there. You could, like I said, be talking. You could seem like you're there, mm-hmm. but in your, it's like you go into a space in your brain, okay. or you could be like where you're. I've had this happen too, where you're like, oh yeah, kind of an out of body experience. Mm-hmm. You're up in the corner of the room, looking down on yourself, right? Yeah. Um, but they see this a lot with, um, unfortunately, like gang, you know, rape situations and mm-hmm. things like that, where. The guys will say, uh, oh, but she was liking it or Mm -hmm. she didn't. Why wouldn't she move? Why didn't she get off the bed? Like she had multiple opportunity or, you know, that Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so I just, you know, we're not experts. And I I do want to point that out. Tamara and I are neither one of us are doctors. So we're not experts. Um, Learned enough about it and have experienced it. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're here for, by the way, always in listening to our podcast is that we're here Mm -hmm. as a peer support to Mm -hmm. talk about the things that we have been through and then hopefully that you can relate to as well. And we do hope to bring on more informed people that can Mm -hmm. give us more scientific aspects. But anyway, I just want to, it just made me think about that one moment learning about Mm -hmm. just all the, all the different facets that our brain can do. Right. Definitely. Definitely. So, okay. So we did, um, fight and freeze and flight flight is another one that we talk about. Um, you hear a lot. So the flight trauma response makes you want to escape danger and avoid conflict to keep yourself safe. The body compels you to flee from danger, escape from pain or avoid other unpleasantness. Mm. So, We've heard of those, but then this test talked about the fawn response. The fawn trauma response makes people believe avoiding confrontations can be accomplished by being nice to others. When you're threatened, your body tries to avoid danger by making you seek approval from and appease the person who is threatening you. <clears throat> That came up as my I second highest of- one. And so it says um, hmm. common signs and behaviors. Uh, you're focused on making sure everyone else thinks, focused on making sure everyone else thinks about how cool you are. I think I had to read that. I was like, wait, how cool I am. I, I think like, you know, like, oh, I'm calm in this situation. Look, I'm calm. It's fine. Everything's cool. Mm-hmm. I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, has trouble saying no. Feel, feels unsafe if someone is being excessively polite fast eye movement in scanning afraid to express personal thoughts um, has a desire to be overly full I'd be really interested to hear what my what my scores would be yeah. that's so interesting um, and it makes so much sense too. Right. And I think about that as like um, the, the abuser that I had as a child who was an older child, but I spent the majority of my time trying to appease this child. Um, like I wanted to be accepted. Uh, you know, I wanted it's like, no, please let me play. Please let me play. Please let me be around you. Everything's fine. I'm fine. Cool with this. Look at this. You know, look at look at me. Look how easy breezy I am. It's okay. Um, mm-hmm. 
And so I think, you know, when I read that, it really, it did stir something. It was like stomach churning response because Mm -hmm. of what, you know, of of that abuse as a child. So, yeah, I could definitely, I mean, probably most of us that have been, you know, I mean, I was three, you know, four or five, six, when you've crossing those boundaries, I would imagine that then that, that response probably is definitely an ingrained response because, well, now I have to please, you know, right. These people. Mm -hmm. Um, mm, Yeah. I, I would love to look into that more. I would love to know what I am, you know? Yeah. Oh, and wow. I, I, I think about, um, you know, an aspect why I didn't tell anybody what happened to me in high school. The memories of my grandfather didn't come back till I was much, you know, older. And I didn't mm-hmm. even know what was going on with my mom and all that. Right. But in high school, I didn't tell my dad because, I mean, just, I mean, I was a Spitfire girl, like. Yeah. And I just never forget that my dad used to say, um, well, I don't ever have to worry about you. You know, mm-hmm. I don't ever have to, like, I know that you'll like, you stand your own. Um, and I had, you know, people said that they were afraid of me or that I, I hate, I think I've talked about this before. I mean, I hope that I don't have RBF, but yeah. maybe I do. I don't know. But, you know, sometimes people would say, oh, you know, you scared me. And I'm thinking, how in the mm-hmm. world would I scare you? I couldn't touch a, I couldn't hurt a fly really. Right. Unfortunately, you know, um, right. but apparently I appeared tougher than I yeah. actually was. You know? And then that made me feel that much more guilt and shame mm-hmm. because I didn't fight. I froze, you know? Yeah. And yeah. so I'm sure that it might, hopefully uh, if you relate, then I'm glad that that at least I can speak into that for you, that it isn't your fault and that this is a common, common response. Mm -hmm. Um, But then also if you feel the need to please, even when like, is what you're saying with the fawn, like the need to please, even those that aren't, that you know, aren't right, that you know, are doing something wrong. Uh, It goes into even the kind of the craziness of, um, you know, when people are, what's that called when they're stolen, when they're kidnapped and then they have, um, oh yeah. Like when they start to, um, like fall in love with their captor, not fall in love, but they, yeah, I can't remember what the, what the, um, the name is on the tip of my um, brain and I can't, I know mine too. (laughs) Um, where they start to like associate them. Stockholm Stockholm syndrome. syndrome. That's it. Yes. Those people yeah. screaming. <laughs> yes, I don't know. Everybody's yeah, like, where you start to syndrome. associate with them and have uh, feelings, even feelings of love. It's not like, oh, I've fallen in love with this, but it's like um, you get used to and you bond with them in a way. Um, and I, think but I wonder if that's a part. Of that. It that could be. That's a part. Of that. Yeah, it could be, and I think. Um, with the fawning, it could be too, like, well, if I just, if I just am calm about this and I don't cause a scene and I'm kind about it and I'm loving and I take care of them, then maybe it won't happen again. Like if I'm just, but if I cause a scene and make them angry, then maybe their reaction could be worse or, mm-hmm. I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. And I want, I wonder too, you know, I think about my, um, how fight came up first on there. And I think that could possibly be Mm -hmm. due to just in the past few years, just recent experiences where I thought, oh yeah, no, I fought that or I fought that. And I, um, but I froze in this situation, like I said earlier, because it wasn't something I expected. You know, I think, Mm -hmm. You hear about women like that show um, on Lifetime called Snapped. And it's mm-hmm. not just women, but typically on that show, it's women. <laughs> but when people go, oh, no, I don't know what happened. She just snapped. Well, no, she didn't snap. She froze a lot of times before that. Mm-hmm. She 
ran a lot of times before that. She fawned a lot of times before that. And then she snapped, you know, I don't, Mm -hmm. I'm sure there are some people that fight is always their first response, but, um, it, it would make sense to me that if fight would come after a lot Mm -hmm. of other responses didn't get the desired action. I don't know. What do you think about that? I don't, I mean, I, uh... I agree with you on that. And I think for me, I don't know if fight would ever really be my first response in a true, yeah. true situation. Right. I mean, right. I can fight my, you know, kids, my husband, my, I mean, uh-huh. when I say fight, I mean, I'm thinking yelling right. or, you know, I'm not right. thinking well, you confront. fighting anybody. That was one of the things. It's right. like, you're not afraid of confrontation. Well, there's a lot right. of people I'm not afraid of um, confrontation with. Right. Or like I've done a, or I've done this class. There's a, you know, 30 minute hit, um, be like a boxing class, oh, yeah, yeah. an all mm-hmm. women's boxing class. Um, I'll do a, my a shameless plug for them. 30 minute hit. It's in, um, um, a Tuscacita Umble near Fall Creek off Beltway 8, just so y'all know, if y'all are hitting the area. Um, but what's really cool is that you go through these different boxing things. And at the end, they have this mannequin they call Bob and Mm -hmm. just go after Bob. Right. I mean, and you do, and it's like, when you do that, you do think about all the people that you wish kind of that you Mm -hmm. could have landed a punch on, right. That had hurt me in such a harmful Mm -hmm. way. But I, if I was to be very, very truthful, I think that, um, I mean, even thinking about it now, because, I would come up with scenarios. If anybody else is like this, please reach out to me and let me know, because I'd really like to know if y'all are as weird as I am. Um, I often think about like, if this were to happen to me again, if some guy were to try to take advantage of me, whether I knew him or not, um, what I would do. And I would, and I was like, I don't know if I'd be have the ability to fight, like physically fight. Am I strong enough? But um what could I, what, how could I throw him off? Right. Like yeah. mentally. And, um, uh, this, I can't believe I'm saying this on YouTube or on the podcast. Um, but always like, if you just like stick your thumb in his booty hole or something, like something crazy, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know that sounds so horrible, but I was like anything to be like, what? And then if they're like, what the heck was that or whatever? And and hopefully they're like naked. Their eyeballs, right? <laughs> I don't know. I would hope not. Even if they're not, like, I don't know. I don't know how you get your son in their booty hole if they're not naked. Well, well, I mean, you could, Just, you know, up there, like, crack or something. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> I'm hoping they're not naked. But, I mean, even if it had to come down to that point or whatever, I don't I mean, know. I mean, yes, you hope uh, that or, your attacker... You know, there's all kinds of things <laughs> I think about that I really probably shouldn't say on this podcast. Like you could hold on to certain parts, right? And just don't let go. You know what I mean? Oh, like, oh, yeah. rip this thing off. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh. Like, oh. I, listen, my anger is all coming up. But um, so that's how I I'm going to just go fighting, out there and but... say, maybe you're a fighter too. Like <laughs> you would test as a but, fighter. <laughs> but you know what? creeps me out and and freaks me out is um and I've had these dreams I don't have them that much anymore but when I was definitely going through the the major Mm -hmm. the majority of my healing process in my 20s and 30s I would have these dreams of running of flying flying, you know yeah being able to run but yet you can't run fast enough or you come to stairs that you're like oh you have to like fly down them kind of thing or you you know just that feeling of I can't get mm-hmm. away I can't mm-hmm. run fast enough oh I have that that's just the worst it's like I'm not fast enough and it's the ground is slippery underneath me so it's like I can't quite get a good footing and I don't have a voice so it's like mm. I try to yell and I've had it, that too and I can't be heard so, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're like, and you can't get anything out. Yeah, or have you had it to where you can't see? Like you're trying so oh, no, hard I haven't had to that open one. 
I've had it where it's like, mm. I can't open my eye. Like I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't open up my eyes. I can't, I can't. Mm-mm. And then you just start getting really mm. like anxious. No, I've not I've, had that. That makes I'm, me anxious please, for you. Thank you. If okay. anybody has had these feelings, please reach out to me so I don't feel so alone in this moment. Um, it's Shannon at hopefulheartsministry.org. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, we are a right. peer support ministry. You are also supposed to be my peers as well. Just so you know. <laughs> we could use some peer support today. Wondering if you have pre-planned putting your thumb up someone's booty hole in an attack. <laughs> <laughs> or have you had anybody lick your neck unexpectedly? What have you done in you that situation? Unexpectedly <laughs> licked on the neck. Please reach out to. <laughs> Feels like one of those commercials. Oh my goodness. Like those law commercials. Like if you've been exposed to asbestos, please call. <laughs> if you've been exposed to a neck licker, please reach out to Tamara at Hopeful Hearts <laughs> Oh my so, gosh, um, goodness. One of the, on this report, this, that I, on this test that I took, it said um, that a healthy side effect of having fight response, like a tendency to have a fight response is that um, you have an ability to protect yourself or the likelihood of an ability to protect yourself and to feel more courage, but an unhealthy side effect could be um, a struggle with perfectionism or struggle with narcissism. And I was like, oh yeah, because I know, um, I know some narcissists and I think we all have, we all can have narcissistic tendencies at any given time, but you know, we've all encountered, I know at least you and I have some really like, okay, this is diagnosed. This is, this person is a narcissist by the book and those people must be right. They must have the last word. They must win every conversation, every Mm -hmm. argument, you know, where, and they don't need therapy and there's, they're right, good. right. There's like, nothing there's wrong nothing. with them. Right. It's always you. You are the problem. So they can attack you and call you names and um wear you down, you know, in mm-hmm. in that fight. Where um <clears throat> the flight person uh avoids conversations that can be difficult. Um it says that they they also struggle with perfectionism, um, but also have a need to be busy all the time, which I thought was interesting and it makes sense. It's like, if I'm busy, then I don't have time to deal with what's important. I don't have time to get in danger. Mm-hmm. I don't have time to deal with, with that. Um, the fawn, it says, they tend to have good listening skills, which makes sense because it's like, oh, let's not talk about this over here. Let's talk about this over here. And, you know, don't look mm-hmm. at the man behind the curtain. Let's look at this and let me compliment you on this instead. But you have to have listened and you have to know. Um, but it says an unhealthy side effect is that there can be an absence of boundaries, which mm. also makes sense. You know, it's like, Oh no, it's okay. You can lick my neck anytime. It's fine. You know, <laughs> keep going back to that one. Yeah. Um, Next time you should stick your um my thumb. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he'd never lick your neck again. Just saying. Never. Never. I mean, it'd be not unexpected, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's Anyways, such a so. good one. You know, I just. <laughs> I had a friend years ago that had said, like, if you, if somebody was being mean to you or attacking you, whatever, you should poke them in the eyes because then right. if they I'm were really like, sure. if they were like, ah, oh, Tamara poked me in the eyes. And we're like, who pokes somebody in the eyes? Um, mm-hmm. It's just not something you do typically. 
like mm-hmm. putting your thumb up somebody's booty hole. That's it's right. Not a typical expected response. It's something that's going to get them right. It's going to catch them off guard. Right. It's going to shock. Like, uh, what's in here? <laughs> in what I feel like we always digress. I and it's on me. I oh, we do. But in what you were just in what you were just saying, though, it, it I find that interesting. Even if we were, if as with what you and I do with hopeful hearts and how we try to help people. Um, go through that healing journey as we are on our own. Um, but I feel like I still see some of those same responses in regards to the healing journey. Yeah, you know what I mean. That as that I mean that is why we are working with those that are in their thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, even seventies, mm-hmm. because they've it off or you know oh. what was the one that which which response was the one that you know like we're just the not flight. going to the so flight. I'm just going to okay. be busy yeah. I'm just going to be busy and then mm-hmm. I don't have to think about it mm-hmm. if I'm busy if I am always doing something then I don't have to talk about the uncomfortable thing I don't have to deal with the uncomfortable thing I'm just going to be busy I'm going to keep my life so full that I don't have time for my brain to even go there I still mm-hmm. have to deal with it. So I'm going to shove it way down deep inside and just be busy. Mm-hmm. But that's how you get, I think sometimes how you get the, the unhealthy fight response out of people um, mm-hmm. because something has been shoved down so long. And then like the most random thing touches it and it's like it just explodes and it usually they mm-hmm. explode all over someone that really didn't deserve it you know so, right that they love probably right most likely oh, yeah. right mm-hmm. or a random checker at kroger or something mm-hmm. you know it's like somebody just says something right. and it's like you know you always mm-hmm. see things like that on the news where the little pole operator is like, I don't know. I just said, have a nice day. And the guy jumped out of his car and tried to strangle me. It's like, oh yeah, well, it wasn't about you. It's because that mm-hmm. person had been stuffing something for a really long time. And mm-hmm. they just happened to explode on you. You know. Mm-hmm. So it's like when, when good responses go bad, <laughs> right. protection response of fight goes bad there definitely oh yeah so fight flight freeze or fawn fight flight Mm -hmm. freeze or fawn but i just totally lost what i was gonna say (laughs) i hate that you had a freeze moment I did. I just froze. (laughs) Yeah. So, well, so we, we have kind of joked about this, but we say, um, this is what we do. We work with people who have experienced moments or uh, long periods of time in their life where they endured trauma or abuse. And we do peer support, which means we allow you to come and talk to us not allow you really you allow us to hear your story it's what it is right you invite us in to be part of your story and there is no judgment there is uh, never there's zero percent judgment from us because we have been through a lot and we've seen a lot and we've heard a lot and we want to be here for you uh, we have lots of tools and lots of resources so there are things that we can offer up for you, for your awareness and for your healing to help you get started. We also have access to um, just a plethora of resources, um, um, counselors and therapists to put you in touch with, um, resources with other ministries, with organizations like Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and Celebrate Recovery. And, you know, we want to give you practical steps that will help you be a long-term, not just a survivor, but a thriver of what you have gone through in your life. And that's why Shannon and I can laugh today. We can talk about these things and laugh about 
thumbs up a booty hole or poking somebody in the eye, <laughs> things that are really not funny at all. We can laugh because yeah. we have allowed God into the spaces of our heart and our mind and our body where we have been traumatized and he has brought healing and has allowed us to connect to joy again. Um, when there were times in our life when we felt darkness and we felt that depression and uh, couldn't connect with joy. And so God has come in and brought healing for both of us. And that's what we want you to experience through Hopeful Hearts. Everything that we do uh, through this ministry is zero cost. And so we are 100% uh, supported by listeners like you. We're not like PBS, but we're <laughs> And I just said that it made me think of PBS. But we are supported uh -huh. by listeners like you. And um, so we invite you to come in and just get a taste of what we do with Hopeful Hearts Ministry. You can find out more about what we have to offer at hopefulheartsministry.org. You can also find us Hopeful uh -huh. Hearts Ministry on Facebook and on Instagram. And we would love to connect with you at any time. So I'm glad that we got to laugh today together, Shannon. This was a, absolutely a fun episode. So um, <clears throat> it was, and I am being serious. I, we, yes. Tamara and I would both love to hear from you, especially if you have any ideas of things that you would like for us to discuss. So it's either Tamara at or Shannon at hopefulheartsministry.org. Um, so let us hear from you and, and, uh, yeah, we do. We we appreciate you allowing us the opportunity to discuss the hard things, but also giving us grace to be able to laugh about it at times. Yes. So we appreciate yes. that. We hope your day is blessed. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.